is Chad Brown with Chad Brown Law. I am going through the five-step sequential evaluation process that Social Security Administration uses to determine uh, if people that apply for disability benefits are disabled. We have been through the first four steps of the sequential evaluation process. Remind you quickly what those are. Step one is substantial gainful activity, which is a working question. Step two looks at medically determinable severe impairments. Uh, step three looks at the listings, and step four looks at uh, your ability to do past relevant work or jobs you've pretty much done the last 15 years. So finally, we get to step five of the sequential evaluation process, which honestly is where most people uh, thought they were going to be from the beginning. That That's just the only thing they really think disability is about is whether they can work or not. They don't understand the process. But if you can show that you're under, that you're either not working or working under SGA, that you have a medically determinable severe impairment, you've they've determined you don't meet a listing because if you met a listing, we wouldn't get to steps four and five. You would have been approved. They've determined you cannot do your past relevant work. Then they finally get to step five of the sequential evaluation process. So back to my board here, step five of the sequential evaluation process looks at your ability to do any other job in the national economy. So what does that mean? Well, generally what it means is do you have the ability to work full time on a sustained basis, which means you're working approximately 40 hours a week, 450 weeks a year for 12 continuous month for 12 12 continuous months. So can you work a job on a full-time sustained basis without accommodation and without assistance? So what does that mean? Well, it means Basically, you're working in competitive work without help. There's no accommodation, which means the job doesn't have to be modified so that you can do it. And you're working uh, without assistance, which means they don't have to bring someone in to help you do the job. So, for example, an accommodation would be uh, generally they would change some factor in the job so that you could perform it. Well, if it's accommodated work, that's not competitive. Or assistant, for example, you can't meet the lifting requirements of a job, so they have to bring someone in to help you do the lifting. Well, that's assistance. You're not working in the job competitively. So what the court is looking at uh, or the decision makers looking at at step five is your ability to do full-time sustained basis without accommodation or assistance. And if you can do uh, work on a full-time sustained basis, well, then you're not disabled. And if you're not able to perform uh, any competitive work, then you uh, uh, are found to be disabled. There's one wrinkle that kind of pops in at step five, which is really too complicated a topic for this video, but something you need to understand is the grid rules or medical vocational guideline are actually under step five of the sequential evaluation process. Very often people, um, my clients and people I talk with in the general public understand that it's easier to get on disability once you turn 50 or once you turn 55. What they don't know is why. Well, the reason it's easier to get on disability once you turn 50 or 55 is because of what are called the grid rules or the medical vocational guidelines. So what happens is there's a chart, um, the medical vocational guidelines is a chart that looks at uh, if you can't do your past relevant work at step four, then they make some assumptions. They look at how much education you have. Uh, they look at what type of job skills you have and whether they are, are possibly transferable. And then they look at an assumption about what level of work you can do, sedentary, light, or medium. And those jobs, uh, those uh, um, types of work are very specifically defined by the Social Security Administration. But what happens in the medical vocational guidelines is you sort of have this chart and you do one of these numbers where you go across and come down and that chart will either say disabled or not disabled. If the medical vocational guideline says you're disabled, then you win your case. That's what happens very frequently with people that are 50 or 55. The medical vocational guidelines step in and say, even though you're able to work at, say, sedentary or light work, we're not going to make you do those types of jobs. We're going to deem you to be disabled. So we get people on disability all the time who are able to work, but the medical vocational guidelines say they don't have to because of their age, education, prior work experience, and limitations they have. So what will happen is uh, when you go into step five, actually one of the things the court looks at first is do you meet a grid rule? 
And so you'll look at what level it's reasonable for you to be. So, for example, if you have uh, tremendous issues with walking and standing, it would make sense for you to be limited to a sedentary or sitting job. Well, if you're over 50 and you can't do your past work and you're limited to a sitting job, there's a good chance the medical vocational guidelines will say that you're disabled. And so we win a lot of cases for people over 50 and 55 using those. Uh, I'll, tr I'll try to do a video later that kind of works through all of uh, how those work specifically. But generally understand the grid rules are in part uh, step five of the sequential evaluation process. And lots of people win their case at step five because they're over 50 or 55 and those rules come into play and help them. If you're not disabled under the grid rule, it doesn't mean you're not disabled. It just means they have to finish the step five analysis of whether you can work on a full-time sustained basis without accommodation or assistance. And once again, if they find that you can, you'll be found not disabled. If they find that you can't do uh, full-time work on a sustained uh, basis without accommodation or assistance, then you're going to win your case and you're going to be found disabled. So anyway, that's step five of the sequential evaluation process. Hope that helps.